Let's do it. Merley Cobham Sports FC is a small non-league football club based in Dorset. It's a close-knit club and every supporter counts. However, there is one thing that all football clubs share and it's their goal to fight for the title. Hi, my name is Tony Grimes, G-R-O-V-E-S, and I'm currently the chairman of the organising committee of the football club Burley Cobham Sports FC and have been in that post three seasons and still enjoy it. Merley Cobham Sports FC is currently second in the Dorset Premier League. They have a small but good chance of winning the league this year, something the club has never done with its current name. The club has played 24 games and 10 games are left in the season. We know that they will be pushing for anything to win and every result counts. That will be a difficult club to beat today. They always produce a very competitive summer. With the pressure growing on the backs of every player, Merley Cobham had kicked off. Merley Cobham had started off very slow, allowing Portland United reserves to attack without really any reply. Cobham really looked off the ball as they were giving possession away easily. Certainly didn't look like the team second in the table. However, Portland didn't really have anything to reply with either, so the half-time score was 0-0. In the second half, it seemed to be a completely different game. A much better start from Cobham allowed them to explore with more creativity and flair. Then, in the 52nd minute, Ross Till was tripped in the box, and the referee had no option but to point to the penalty spot. Up stepped Matt Groves. It's been my son who scored uh, 42 goals in one season. I don't think there's many people gone past that. And there were no doubts whatsoever. Groves scores the first goal of this match, and based on their second half display, they deserved it. After the goal, Merley Cobb grew into their own, and they finally started showing their quality. Shot after shot went in, and pass after pass were being strung together. However, after a quick sprint down the left-hand side from Elliot Rossiter, Merley Cobham were in again. Very, very quick player. You, you will see him. Don't let me call him Flash. He is quick. After a brilliant strike, it was 2-0 to the hosts after 80 minutes. After a few more attacks, the game was done and dusted. The referee points to the centre circle, and that was that. A fantastic three points to the team in blue. The players walk off the pitch, and they should be proud after a great performance in the second half. With another win by Hamworthy Recreation FC, the gap still remains at five points between themselves and the nearest competitors, Merley Cobham Sports FC. I understand you're currently second. Yes. Uh, chasing Hamworthy Recreation FC. Yep. Five points behind. Do you think it's possible to snatch the league title? I do. I do. If we beat them next time, it narrows it to, to uh, two points because we have a game in hand. Merley Cobham's next opponents, Hamworthy Recreation FC are the team at the top, they are the team to beat. Everyone looks up to them as the example. If we're honest, they are almost too good for this league, winning against everyone they face. Every team is scared of them, apart from one. It would be quite an achievement for Hambrick to go the whole season with only being beaten once, and we beat them. It was clear in the early fishes this year that Merley Cobham were too good for Hamworth Recreation. Clear 5-0 winners away from home too. They were confident and they had a good reason to be too. Last year we beat them in Cups as well. So they don't particularly like players. Matt Groves is an incredibly important player and not only that but character in the Merley Cobham squad too. He has two roles, star striker and manager. I would say quite a tough job. Uh, Matthew Groves playing for Merley Cobham. Being the manager and the star striker, he must take the pressures on his shoulders, almost for the whole team, so you can imagine how he is feeling ahead of this huge game. Uh, obviously to me in the club, it's, um, it's the most important game of the season. If we don't get the three points today, we have seven games to go, we probably won't catch them, so it'll be our, our league challenge over, so I can't sort of stress the importance of us hopefully getting the three points at five o'clock. This is the season-defining game. It's an absolute must-win for them to stay in the fight, and we know how much it means to them. To win the league, obviously, it's what we've been trying to do for the last three or four years. We've been called off the last two seasons, which was obviously disappointing. So it would mean a lot to us to hopefully um, get that title, but there's a, there's a long way to go yet. Merley Cobham will feel rightly hard done by. Their league success has been hindered by the pandemic. The last two seasons cancelled because of lockdown restrictions. In the 2019-20 season, after 19 games played, they were top of the league with 46 points. And then last season, after nine games played, 
they were unstoppable, winning all nine games, and six points clear of the team in second. Although we've had many cup successes, actual success in the league has invaded us narrowly. The pandemic beat us the last time we were actually got our noses in front and we were odds on to winning. Hopefully, we'll be able to do it this time around. Right? We hope. So this is it then. The huge match versus Hamworthy Recreation is with us. The top of the table clash that could potentially decide the title. Is Hamworthy going to establish their lead at the top, or is Merley Cobham going to take one step further? Hamworthy Rec kick off and we are underway. The team in green quickly showed why they are top of the table as with three minutes in, they take an early lead, Watson scoring the goal that takes the lead for the away team. A nightmare start for Cobham. However, it seemed that Merley Cobham were up for it today as almost instantly Matt Groves was at the back stick to knock in a ball from across and the game was level again after five minutes. As Groves wheeled, wheeled away to celebrate, some things I cannot repeat were said and tensions were rising. If it wasn't obvious before, this was not just any old game for Cobham, a local derby that had turned a bit sour. Rec looked the team on top again as they were knocking it around easily in Merley's half. Buck tried all he could to bring the ball forward, but it wasn't enough. The ball was given away, and on 27 minutes, Rosenwald strikes the ball home to make it 2-1. That wasn't the end, however, as six minutes later, he ran at the defence again and slotted a mid-range shot to make it 3-1 to the league leaders. As they were celebrating, the players must be thinking to themselves how they managed to concede again so quickly. Then, two minutes later, when you thought it couldn't get any worse, key defender Nathan Walker dives in with a passionate tackle that went through more man than ball. A huge cry from the player and his team arose and the referee had no choice but to pick a red card from his pocket. Walker was sent off. The game was very quickly turning into a nightmare for Murray Cobham. The red card had almost certainly denied them any chance because they only had 10 men left on the pitch. What had happened? They were falling apart and it was very suddenly looking very bad for them. After a 5 minute stoppage to treat the man down, Satterley stepped up for the free kick from 25 yards. It took a deflection from the wall and an arrowed straight into the net. They had scored 4. Their faces looked stunned from both sides. It was half time and the score was 4-1. Despite the circumstances, Cobham came out second half the better side. However, the edginess to the game carried on, with the referee having a tough job this afternoon. Great saves from Tong meant that Merley Cobham were left frustrated as they struggled to get the breakthrough in the second half. The comeback looked a little more likely. However, it took, it took until the 85th minute for that deadlock to be broken. A powerful header from Gundogdu fired the host with one goal back. However, it was way too late for any comeback. 4-2, the final score. The table looked less kind after this game, now 11 points behind with the game in hand so that gap could be reduced to 8 points with a win. You could feel the pin drop in the ground, by the players and the fans. The whole season felt done then and there at the time of the final whistle, and even before that really, at the red card, it really felt like the end. But they've got to forget about all of this and go again next week. We're back and it's another beautiful day for football. Today we're at Chapel Gate facing a very tricky Bournemouth sports side away from home. Can Cobham finally get back to winning ways? Groves gets us kicked off. It was quite a bright start from both sides but Cobham was slightly in front, generating more chances and had a bit more possession of the ball. The deadlock was then broken. Roster picked up the ball on the halfway line and after a brilliant run, Eddie Myers was judged to have fouled Roster in the box and a penalty was given. Strong protests from the sports players were waved away by the referee and Matt Grove stepped up to take the penalty, their second in just three games. There were no doubts as he went to the keeper's right and it was 1-0 to the team chasing the leaders. Chances kept flowing from the away side and there was a second for their efforts. The skipper Lee Wilkins headed in a looping ball to make it 2-0 after 28 minutes. After the second goal went in, however, Bournemouth Sports had more time on the ball with Abubakar their main threat throughout the whole game. Then, in the fourth minute of added time at the end of the first half, the Cobham keeper made a brash decision to dive in, rather late, and, in my opinion, was quite lucky to receive only a yellow card. Bournemouth Sports had a dangerous free kick, and Jack Voisey had an easy header to make the score 2-1 on the half-time whistle. In the second half, Knights, the Cobham keeper, made some brilliant saves as Bournemouth Sports piled on the pressure. But then, as a result from the corner from a brilliant save, Voisey again struck in the 67th minute to make it 2-2, Devastation again for Cobham. This quickly turned even worse for the team in blue, as 12 minutes later, Josh Moody rose up and headed another ball into the Cobham net, and it was now 3-2 to the home side. They had completed a fantastic comeback, and it was 
deserved. This game wasn't over yet, however. Roster and Buck were still very explosive on the wings, and they pushed as much as they could when Merle Cobham were in possession. Their creativity had won them a free kick in the dying embers of the game. The referee had added on a huge chunk of added time due to many injuries throughout the game, and also a drinks break in the second half. The ball was swung into the box, and Matt Groves latched onto the loose ball and struck home to make it 3-3. A 96th minute equaliser from the veteran striker had stolen a point back. The full-time whistle was blown as the ball went in. The ball sports players were not happy at all, and their protests continued long after the whistle. A player was booked after the final whistle, and one was shown the red. A nightmare end to the match for sports, however, Cobham would be satisfied with the point after their collapse in the second half. With six games left in the season and Merley Cobham Sports FC, it seems very unlikely that they will go on to win it, and they are 16 points behind with two games in hand on Hanworthy Recreation. Sadly, this looks like the end for Cobham's title challenge this year, but one thing we haven't mentioned, it's the League Cup, and they're in the final. On the 9th of April 2022, the league title was sealed. With Hamworthy Recreation's win against Corfe Castle, they were confirmed champions of the Dorset Premier League. They were clearly the best side in the division this year. However, this makes the League Cup final mean so much more to Cobham. A chance for silverware. Cobham's route to the final is as follows. In the first round, they beat Sturmitz and Newton United FC 1-0 away from home, before beating Hamworthy United FC reserves 4-1 in the quarters away from home and then defeating Dorchester Sports FC 3-0 also away from home in the semi-finals. But who do they meet in the final, you ask? It simply had to be them. Hamworthy Recreation FC. In their first round, they beat Blanford United FC 8-2 away, before overcoming Western Sports FC in the quarterfinals 5-1 at home, and then narrowly getting through against Bridport FC reserves in an entertaining 4-3 win at home in the semis which sets up a brilliant final between the two top teams in the Dorset Premier League for another chance at winning a trophy. A win for Merlicom could disrupt Hamworthy Rex's party of a potential domestic double, so that's why they are eager for this final. Will it be the double for Hamworthy Rec, or will Merlicom upset the newly crowned league champions? So this is it then, Merlicom's chance at revenge on their rivals Hamworthy Recreation FC. It was a very busy atmosphere today, lots of fans had turned out for this cup final from both sides. The two teams had lined up for the team photos and the anticipation for kickoff had started. The game started off with a very high tempo from both sides, but it would be Hamworthy that would have the first say very early on. Jack Satterley put, had put the league winners 1-0 up within 4 minutes, but Merley would not give up easily. Groves had a corner which was whipped in with power, connected with skipper Wilkins and then bundled into the net by Ross Hampton Brown. It was 1-1 and it is like a repeat of that league fixture last time out. Two rapid fire goals put the tie into the balance again. It was only five minutes in and two goals had been scored. So everyone was ready for a mouth-watering final. After Cobham's goal was scored, Hamworthy Rec were enjoying the ball but Murley were coping well. The defence was very tight but it made for some brilliant football. It seemed that Merley Cobham were trying the long ball tactic, as with every slim opportunity they had, it would be knocked long for the forwards to run onto. However, there was no further goal mouth action in this half, and both teams went in at half time one apiece. The second half, however, had goals. Rex started off very quickly as the ball was found by Johnny Webb, who fired a cross into Satterley's feet, whose finish was powerful yet again. 2 1 the score now. Merley Cobham tried to respond with a lot of play coming on the right hand side, but to no avail. In the 54th minute, Leg had played a ball onto a running Watson who had knocked the ball past Andy Knights who had come rushing out of his goal and into the net. The dominant Hamworthy wreck had now made it 
The rec players were frustrated after Roster had fallen over in the box, who they felt should have been booked for diving. Then a free kick was given in Merley Cobham's box for two teammates colliding with each other. However, the frustration had turned into fortune for them, as in the 64th minute it was Ash Boyt who found room in the box to shoot to make it 4-1. Sadly, another collapse again for Cobham. But it wasn't over yet. Merley still had something up their sleeve. Buck was still having a good game and he was rewarded for his efforts in the 76th minute, scoring for the team in blue to make it 4-2. Surely a comeback isn't on. I can answer that for you. No. Eight minutes later, the number 16, Jake Kelly, found himself in the box to strike home to make it 5-2. The goal scorer had only been on for five minutes before finding the net. After the wreck goal, Merlicom switched on again and Buck was finding some good space out wide. However, it was the man on the other wing that would find the, another goal for them. Rossiter had his cross deflected off of David Legge into the net to make it 5-3. It was too little too late, however, and the final whistle was blown. Hamover Recreation FC were League Cup champions. The Merley Cobham players should be proud of their efforts in the final, but their opponents were simply the better team on the day, so they were rightful winners. And with that, let's watch them lift their second trophy of the year. Hamover Recreation FC, the Dorset Premier League Cup champions. It's a sad finish to the season for Cobham, but their heads should be held high for the next season. With that, the season was now over. These are the final standings in the league table for the 2021-2022 season, and Merley Cobham Sports FC had finished runners-up in both competitions they had competed in. This is a huge disappointment for all of the fans and the players. However, there may be some good times ahead. With the news that Hanworthy Recreation FC had applied for promotion, it could be that success returns to Merley Cobham. With their main title rivals not under the Dorset Premier League, they should have a genuine shot at the league next year. With new, younger players coming in and maturing, and their top scorer Matt Grove still at the top of his game, anything could be possible. After all the drama this year, and despite the setbacks, they kept going. The mentality and the standards are still very high at this football club, so next season they're going to have to be at the top of their game, but in the end, and no matter what happens, they will always be pushing for glory.